Hey guys, welcome to my video all about Yosemite and the top five hikes um, for you to do this. So just to give you a bit of background info if you've never watched my channel before, um, I'm a flight attendant and I spend a lot of time in the US, particularly California is my favourite. Um, and pre-pandemic, I was going to Yosemite three times a month. So I know the park really well. I've been in all seasons. I've also hiked the JMT and the High Sierra Loop. So I've spent a lot of time in the Sierras. Hopefully that will give you some confidence that the way that I've ranked these um, is accurate. We established I'm British, so if my accent isn't, you know, making something clear for you, please um, comment below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So to start off with, I will just tell you what, how I've done this. So I've picked five hikes based on accessibility, views, effort, difficulty, uh, time, um, but equally, um, I have avoided certain things, so like Half Dome, for example. I've not included the Half Dome hike, mainly because you need a permit to do it anyway. And I just think, if you're watching this video because you're going to Yosemite tomorrow or next week, it's going to be way too late for you to snap a permit for Half Dome. But I will just get straight into it. So at number five, I have popped the Valley Loop Trail um, as number five. Now the reason I have included this on the list is I know if you're an avid hiker, you might find it a bit unchallenging in the sense that it's very flat, um, but it's really cool. So you go all the way around um, the whole valley. So it takes 11, it's 11.5 miles for the full loop, but there's a half loop that you could do where you could trim it down a bit to 7.2 miles. So whilst it's flat, it's a lot of walking as well. You'll pass loads of obvious things like up, uh, upper and lower Yosemite Falls down, from, down by Camp 4 so that you get to see them. You'll pass um, Mirror Lake, for example. Lots of different like cool points, El Cap. Um, so you'll get to see Yosemite. If you're going to be really quick, you could do it in less. And equally, if you want to drag it out for the day and stop, you can. You'll also pass things like the Awani Hotel. You'll pass the gift shops, the um, the museums, the visitor centres. So you'll get to stop at those if you want to, but equally, you can avoid that and just spend time away from the crowds. On this particular this trail, it's really good for wildlife. I've seen so many coyote, as well as all the usual suspects. I've even seen a bear on this trail. So, you know, you can spot wildlife and enjoy yourself. One thing that I would say as well is you can do this hike pretty much all year round. Um, Yosemite Valley itself is usually a little bit sheltered from the really bad weather in winter, but obviously if a storm blows in, it will snow and the trail will be icy and there might be patches of snow, so you might want snowshoes or spikes then. So at number four, I have picked the North Dome Trail. So. I'll start off just by shamelessly plugging that I have got a video of this hike, so there is a link below. It's a really good day hike. It's out of the valley, so if you're heading to Yosemite in summer, this is a great one because you're going to be away from that intense crowded situation that you get down in the valley. To get there, you need to access Tioga Road. Tiger Road is open seasonally, it closes in winter, so this hike is not really going to be accessible to you after November. So to get to this hike, you're going to enter Yosemite Valley, ideally from the Flat Oak entrance. You don't have to go this way, but this is the easiest way, so particularly if you're coming from the Bay Area or, or Northern California, this will work for you. You're going to get to the junction, which turns onto Tioga Road, you're going to take that and you're going to drive for about 15 minutes. You'll see the Porcupine Creek trailhead. I've really struggled to say that. Okay, so if you want to get there early in the morning, you'll be fine for space. Um, the trail is super easy mark, so you initially start by zigzagging down um, until you reach sort of um, a, a sort of maintainable level. And from that point, it's pretty flat. There's a few ups, a few downs, but on the whole, it's flat. You're going to meander through the forest. There's lots of turnoffs for different trails, so make sure you watch my video and you'll see exactly where you need to go. It is pretty easy, though. Um, and once you reach the point of North Dome, you're going to come out into this amazing um, granite sort of plateau where you'll just get the most insane views. You're going to see Clouds Rest, Half Dome, you're going to be able to look down on the valley. It's so, so beautiful. Um, on this trail, I've seen a bear, so it's really good for wildlife. Um, I've also seen a rattlesnake and lots of chipmunks, so you never know. 
what you can get that day. So the trail itself is 8.8 .8 miles round trip, so it's out and back as 8.8 .8 miles from here. Of course you can get to there from lots of other trails, but we're focusing on this as a day hike from the Porcupine Creek Trailhead. Yeah, so I really like this hike. I think it's one of my favourites anyway, without even ranking them. This is always one that I always think of. So at number three, I have um, put quite a hard hike. It's Upper Yosemite Falls. So you may have seen it if you've already done the Valley Loop. It's the two waterfalls. You get the huge big one, then you get a smaller one, and then you get the valley. So you're basically going to hike all the way up to the top. It's a hard hike, so I want to stress this is a difficult hike. It's accessible pretty much all year round, but you know, if you're going to be in winter, you're going to need spikes, snowshoes, poles. So again, I have got a video for this hike, the link is down below. 7.2 miles, you're going to gain 2,100 feet, no sorry, 2,700 feet, I think it is, of elevation gain from the valley floor all the way up to the top. Um, it takes about six hours for me to do the hike, um, but for other people it could even take longer. At the top you're going to again get these huge insane views of all of the Sierra. Um, you get to actually go down to the, the water and watch it just tumbling off the edge. Obviously if you do this in the spring you can get more water because of the snow melt. By late summer, early fall it can dry up almost completely. There's a lot of danger that you need to watch for as well. It's quite exposed, you need to make sure you've got sunscreen. Altitude sickness can really kick in on this hike, so make sure that you spot the signs of it. There have been reports in the past as well of people that have passed away because they've got too close to the edge, taken pictures, or because they've dipped in the water right up top. Now, that's not allowed. You are never allowed to do that under any circumstance, but people do, and I think as humans, we are like sheep. We see someone else do it and we think, oh, we'll do it too. So just be really vigilant. You don't want to mess up. You don't want to lose your life over a picture for Instagram, right? It's an amazing hike, soak it up, but make sure you do it safely. So, number two, and I have picked probably the most classic trail. So, based on all those things I said at the start, and I said about crowds, this is probably the most crowded of all of these, and it's the Mist Trail. So, you would take um, the Mist Trail from stop 16 on the shuttle bus. Now, in the pandemic, that wasn't running. Um, but it's basically Happy Isles, which is the trailhead. Now this is also where the JMT starts, so if you're hiking in, you know, summer season, you'll notice people with huge backpacks, uh, just like I did, as you can see here, um, hiking the JMT back in 2016. So, um, so, yeah, so basically you start the trail from there, and you're going to walk, it's pretty flat to begin with, and then it's going to go uphill. Now from here you'll come by this wicked sign which tells you all about, um, all the trails that you can get to from Happy Hours. It's a huge trailhead. It's very popular for lots of backcountry hikes as well. You'll get a lot of people on this section of the trail with buggies, strollers. Um, do you call them prams? We call them prams, but you might not call them prams. Uh, or wheelchairs as well. Um, so that part of the hike gets steep, but it is, it's not too bad. Like, it's just, it's fine. Um, and you'll come to a footbridge. And at this footbridge, there's a water spout. There is pit toilets as well. And this is the last place where you can get access to water um, without filtering. Now, that part, that water is seasonal, so it just don't rely on it too much. Unless you're going in July, don't rely on it because it might not be running. So who, who could forget COVID? That's fucked everything up, so that might have fucked up the water spout too. So at this point, the trail forks. So in one way, you've got the Mist Trail, the other way is the John Muir Trail. You're going to head up firstly to Vernal Falls. Now to get there, it's steps the whole way. There is a lot of mist coming off the trail, off the waterfall, which can make it pretty slippy on trail. Um, equally, it can be quite dry and hot if you're doing it in a, in a drought year. Um, if you're doing this in winter, you might not be able to take the mist trail. So there'll be a sign, at the, there's a gate that they can close and the rangers will put a sign up and they'll say you have to take the, the John Muir Trail. Before COVID, you could do however you wanted to do. You could go up the way you came, back the way you came, or you could do it as a loop. When COVID came, because it's so crowded on this trail, they made it where well, you have to do a loop, um, which can make complete sense because obviously people would be like passing each other face to face on the stairs, which is what we're told not to do. Um, so the hike itself, okay, it's difficult. I'm not gonna lie. A third of people will only go to the bridge 
Um, then another third will probably make it all the way up to um, vernal falls. But it's very few then, that, that very small 30% that will actually carry on after vernal falls. So once you get to the top of the stairs, you'll get this amazing like pool of water that sort of collects. People will try to swim here as well, you know, I tell you off, don't go swimming. And you get, yeah, you can look down, it's really safe, it's like barriers this, you can look at, at everything. Nevada Falls. Now this is the best bit. The hike is hard, so you're going to come around the forest, you're going to cross another bridge, and then you're going to meander through some sort of three dark forest. But some of the views, I check out this photo that I took on the way, it's so beautiful, with, especially in the morning with the light coming, breaking through. Then is you're going to do switchbacks, and this is going to take you all the way up to the top and then you can soak your feet in the river, you can really enjoy these insane photos, insane views that you're gonna get from up there. You need about five hours for the full thing, um, and if you're gonna stay at the top and soak it in, you might even need more. But it's crowded to begin with, but I promise if you stick with it, the crowds do disperse. Um, and as difficult it is, 2,000 feet of elevation gain, it's not easy, but I recommend it. Some honourable mentions, because I can't include all my lovely hikes. Um, Lambert Dome, Glacier Point, and May Lake are my three that didn't quite make the cut today. Um, but there are videos of these hikes um, on my channel, so subscribe and you'll be able to see those. Lambert Dome is one that's near Tuolumne Meadows. This one is a little bit out of the valley, so I didn't include it just because of where it's located, but it's a great day hike. It's a short hike as well, so you could do it in the morning and then go into the valley in the afternoon. Glacier Point, um, which you can take from the, uh, take the four mile trail um, from the valley up to Glacier Point, or you can drive there, which is why I didn't include it. Um, because I think if you're gonna drive there, then what's the point in hiking, right? But I've seen bear on this trail. It's, um, it's a really good hike, it's really cool. And the view is exceptional of Yosemite. Um, and then May Lake, uh, it's one of those ones that's like, it's seasonal, it's kind of out the way, but it's really cool. There is a video of this hike, so please do watch and, and see what you think. So my number one, which is the best day hike in Yosemite, I have picked this hike controversially because it's not an easy hike. I have picked Clouds Rest from Yosemite Valley. So it's a big one. It's 20 miles round trip. A hell of a long hike. You can do it from um, Tanaya Lake as well actually, I didn't think of that, but I like it from the valley because that's a hike that's going to get these legs worked out. If you want to and you don't want to go the whole way and back in one day, if 20 miles is too much for you, then you can get a permit um, and you can camp in say like Little Yosemite Valley or the Clouds Rest Junction. You're going to gain over 6,000 feet of elevation in this hike, so I promise you don't do it unless you really are up for the challenge. But it's just insane, like you'll, you'll see things that I can't even explain in a video. It's, it's so beautiful. It's hard, it's really hard, but it's so beautiful. It's different to Half Dome, you don't need a permit to go up there. But if you're scared of heights, don't do it. If, you're a su if you suffer from things like altitude sickness, don't do it because it's a very long hike. My recommendation is that you start the day about 2 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning, so you want to be hiking before the sun rises, really. If you can make your way um, up the Mist Trail or the John Muir Trail from Happy Isles, um, so either one of those, you're not focused on the waterfalls, you're not focused on that stuff. So maybe the JMT is actually the better option, but you you need to be, if you're going to go to Clouds Rest, you need to be mentally available for Clouds Rest, which means shutting out the other things that you'll see along the way. That's why I put the mist trail as number two because it's a frigging great hike and you really want to do it. But when you do the mist trail, you want to do the mist trail. You want to soak up that. You don't want to be trying to do too much. So once you get up to then Little Yosemite Valley, um, you've already hiked about four miles by this point, so you've done really well. You can just follow the Clouds Rest Trail all the way up and then you can just come back the way you came. Unless you have a friend who could pick you up from Tioga Road, the kind of hike that you only can get in Yosemite. This hike is very going to be dependent on the season. You need to do it in the summer. Um, watch out for thunderstorms. They pose, pose a huge risk, um, especially um, in summer, afternoon storms. So if you see the clouds darkening over, you see a storm coming in, you need to get down to a lower elevation as soon as possible. It's very exposed. My number one, and it will always be, I think, the number one hike I've ever done. That's five hikes. There are so, 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 so many hikes in Yosemite that are exceptional. It's really hard to shoehorn hikes into a list. 
And I'm sure that if you watch other people's YouTube channels, they'll rank different, the same hikes or different hikes in different order. So I hope that you um, have gained something from this. I hope I've helped somebody. If I've helped one person to decide on what hike to do, then that's fa fantastic. Please let me know if you do any of these hikes. Let me know if the info was good. Let me know how the hike went for you. Um, and if there's any other national parks or hikes that you'd like me to discuss quickly like this, please let me know. Have the best time in Yosemite. It's the best place and like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. A thousand miles away from home I miss you more than you know